Identifying linear correlation is what we'll be talking about today. It's SMA11. Linear, meaning a straight line. So that's not a straight line. A straight line is, you know, straight. And then correlation, meaning a relationship. So a relationship between two variables, usually X and Y. And um, it mainly deals with data. So we'll be looking at a lot of data, the relationship between X and Y. And we want to know if that relationship is linear when we use a line of best fit. So here's our first example. We can see several uh, red dots that represent our data points. So this would be our x-axis, this would be our y-axis, and we can see the dots that exist. And then we have this line of best fit that represents their relationship. Is this linear? Well, yeah, it is linear. It's a straight line. It doesn't look, it doesn't look like an exponential. It doesn't look like a logarithmic. It doesn't look like a quadratic. It's definitely a linear fit. And so when I go down here to the question, yes, it appears to be linear, bubble and true. No, it does not appear to be linear, bubble and false. I'm going to go ahead and bubble and true because this appears to be a linear function. So if we look at this second example and we're studying the relationship between height and weight, and the data points, and if we draw a line of best fit, which is this line, the line that best fits our data points, does this line look like it's linear? Well, it kind of does, but... If you think about it, it goes up, and then it starts to curve a little bit, and then it curves back up. So although it looks very close to a linear line, it's actually not. It's actually a cubic line, right? So if we're answering this question, does it appear to be linear? Well, no, it does not. So we know that it's false. To add and build upon what we've been looking at, uh, we've, we've added an additional portion to the question. So let's go ahead and tackle this one. A study done by... Lab Ox suggests there is a correlation between a person's height and their body weight. In order to prove this, they took the height and weight of nine people and created a regression model for, from the data. Here is the model. You can see the graph here, and then you can see the model over here next to the graph. Does there appear to be a correlation between the two variables? Yes, there does. As one goes up, the other goes up. We have this nice straight regression line, so we'll just go ahead and Type in yes. So let's move on to the second part of this question. Using the model provided, what is the estimated additional weight, and that's an important word, of somebody who is 15 inches more than any other person? Type the answer unrounded. Well, the most uh, weight, or the tallest person that we have on this data point, is 80. So if we're talking about somebody who's 15 inches more, well, 15 inches more than 80 would be if we extended this line, somewhere like 95. And so what we're trying to figure out is what is the estimated or what is the um, distance right here from the person at 80 to the person at 90? Well, it's really easy to figure that out, actually, because they give us the equation of the line down here. And if we use this part right here, which is the slope, all we have to do is times our slope by the x value that it gives us. So we're going to take the slope, which is 2, and multiply that by 15. So 2 times 15, we know that is 30. So if it's asking us for the additional weight, we know that the additional weight is 30 pounds. Next example. Government A wanted to better understand the relationship between X and Y. In order to figure out the degree of their relationship, they conducted a study and used data to draw conclusions as to the nature of their relationship. Here is the data from the study. So we've got the data here in this graph. Does there appear to be a correlation between the two variables? Type yes or no. Well, we can see these variables here. We can see there's a straight line through it. So yes, there definitely appears to be a correlation. And the second part is using the model, estimate the additional output units for y if the input is five more units than any other x. Now, this sounds a little bit confusing and convoluted. However, we can reason through this. We want to know what the additional output for y would be if we were 5 more units for x. So if you look where x is right now, somewhere between 10 and 11, let's assume that it's 11. If we want 5 more units, and then we want something like 16, which would be over here. So if we extended this line, if we extended this line from 11, to 16, okay, well, what is this distance? We just need the slope, 
and we need to multiply it by 5. Well, it gives us the equation again right here. So we're going to take this slope, and we're going to put in 5 for x. And I'm, act I'm actually going to use a calculator for this because we've got decimals. So here we have 1, 1 1.7565, and we're multiplying that by the additional units, which is 5. And what we get is 8.7825. 8 so 8.7825. Five. Just on a side note, that calculator that you just saw, yes, this one, that's the AZ Merit calculator. It looks just like the calculator you'll have on the AZ Merit. It looks just like the calculator you'll have on your end of course assessment. This is the approved calculator for the course. You may use it for anything. If you don't like doing decimals on paper, plug it in the calculator. You're not a cheater. You're just more intelligent than someone wasting time doing it by hand.